good to go. Well, good afternoon. Thank you all for, for being here. Um, I'm Arnie Duncan, co-chair of the Knight Commission, and so pleased to be joined by Carol Cartwright, who's our commission's other co-chair. We just completed, and you guys are here, I thought three just fascinating, uh, very thought-provoking thought public sessions, and the commission also met privately yesterday. We want to thank all the panelists who brought so many insights and their passion and expertise to our meeting today. I also want to thank the Knight Foundation for their continual support of this commission's work and for these today's public uh, conversations. The discussions today focus primarily on the significant challenges in men's college basketball and the recent recommendations made uh, by the Commission on College Basketball led by Condoleezza Rice. And I'm going to cut right to the chase. The Knight Commission believes, and I personally believe, that the NCAA is facing a day of reckoning. We think this is the moment when the NCAA and the university presidents who lead the organization must demonstrate that they can restore public confidence in the ability of the NCAA to be stewards, to be a good steward of major revenue producing sports. The Knight Commission is calling today on the NCAA to make a basic shift in its model. We want to see the NCAA shift from effectively being a membership organization with inherent conflicts of interest that have always been built into it, quite frankly, to being a leadership organization that is capable of propelling real change. With the current governance model, we don't think the NCA is capable of that kind of fundamental change. The shift will require more independent leadership of the NCA, including independent directors who can play an, an objective role in safeguarding college athletics, especially the revenue producing sports. As a guiding principle, the Knight Commission is recommending that independent directors should ultimately comprise majorities of both the NCAA Board of Governors and the Division I Board of Directors. And Carol will talk about those recommendations in more detail in a moment. But I want to underscore here the principle that the NCAA can only transform into a true leadership organization if they can have independent leadership. Without a change in governance, the NCAA will continue to tinker around the edges of issues and problems that have existed for far too long. To be very clear, I'm not talking about a day of reckoning for Division II and Division III sports, or quite frankly, even the vast majority of Division I sports. Our, reform, our reforms are squarely aimed at the problem today that everyone recognizes, the abuses and corruption that unfortunately are all too common in Division I men's basketball and FBS football, which not, coincident, not, not coincidentally are also the major revenue producing sports. Seems to be a pretty simple premise in life. We should always just follow the money. We applaud the work of the Rice, Rice Commission, particularly its recommendation to add at least five independent directors to the NCA Board of Governors. And that's a long time Knight Commission recommendation. We also support the call for the change in the N NBA draft eligibility rule and their proposal to create an independent infractions and enforcement process in the NCA for cases involving serious alleged violations. Today, we're urging a number of reforms that go beyond those recommended by the Rice Commission. These reforms fall into three broad areas. First, fostering integrity uh, in governance of the NCAA. Second, creating more financial transparency, especially for coaches and shoe apparel companies. And third, strengthening student athlete education and professional development for NCAA college coaches. I'll stop there, turn it over to, our, to my co-chair, Carol Cartwright, to talk about those recommendations in more detail. Carol. Thanks, Arnie. Good afternoon, everyone. A as Arnie said, uh, we do support many of the recommendations made by the Commission on College Basketball, and we encourage their speedy implementation. Uh, we urge university presidents, who ultimately are responsible for leading the NCAA, to adopt an additional package of what we see as complementary reforms to those proposed by the Rice Commission. And we think if they do that, that we will have a more comprehensive package to clean up college sports. The first one is governance. We were pleased to see that the Rice Commission recommended adding at least five independent directors to the Board of Governors. That's a long time Knight Commission goal. 
And as most of you know, the NCAA's Board of Governance is the highest ranking governing body. However, we want to see the NCAA go beyond that by also adding six independent members to the 24 member Division I Board of Directors, now comprised solely of institutional representatives. Uh, the Division I Board is actually the group that controls many of the policies that shape the richest and most powerful college sports programs. So while the top governing board is important, this Division I Board is also very important to have these independent voices. We're recommending, and this is a very strong guiding principle, that a majority of both the NCAA Board of Governors and the Division I Board should ultimately have a majority of independent directors. Those independent voices ultimately will enable the organization to deal with many of the issues that are facing it. And these will improve governance for all of college sports, not just college basketball. Second, with respect to financial transparency, we're calling for the adoption of new and more stringent approvals, terms of conditions and financial disclosures for income that NCAA institutions and their employees, particularly coaches, receive from shoe equipment and apparel companies. One area that we'd like to strengthen that was not directly addressed in the Rice Commission report is income disclosure requirements for NCAA coaches and schools. Under current NCAA rules, coupled with the Rice Commission proposals, operators of showcase basketball tournaments will be required to disclose more about the money they receive from shoe companies, more than NCAA schools and coaches must disclose. And we think that the NCAA coaches and schools should be held to a higher standard. First among our proposed changes would be an, an NCAA rule that no university can give the right to any employee to have a contract with shoe equipment and apparel companies that are expressly or indirectly contingent on players wearing or using the company's equipment or products. Those contracts should not be with individuals, they should be made with the university. Other proposed changes would require greater financial transparency for outside income received by university employees. So let me just highlight two examples. We're calling on the NCAA to require disclosure and written prior approval of any coach's outside income from shoe and apparel companies. That would bring back a requirement adopted in 1992 at the Knight Commission's urging, which was unwisely rescinded a couple of years ago. We're also calling for a rule that will require all Division I schools, public and private institutions, to make public financial disclosures about the outside income any employee receives from a company whose products or apparel are required to be worn by the university student athlete. Uh, as you've heard before, sunlight is clearly the best disinfectant. We can't see any good reason for universities and coaches to shield income from school and apparel companies from public disclosure. Third, with regard to student athlete education and development, we agree with the Rice Commission's assessment that NCAA schools are not doing enough to develop the next generation of college coaches. We propose the development of minimal professional standards that NCAA coaches will be required to meet to ensure they are prepared for their roles as educators and leaders in the development of student athletes. The standards could require the completion of different levels of, for example, coaching licenses or professional certificates. In fact, such a program for NCAA basketball coaches might be modeled after what USA Basketball requires of the college coaches approved to coach USA Basketball national teams. These coaches are required to have a background check and complete a safe sport co course. This same USA Basketball certification is required of any youth sport coach whose team wants to play in an NCAA certified event. With all the bad news about basketball, there is some good news about some of the processes that are in place. Last year, USA Basketball certified more than 23,000 youth basketball coaches and 19,000 of them 
were through the n c a a summer recruiting certified events process so this requirement in youth basketball has been successful and we can understand why n c a a basketball coaches face a much less rigorous certification process than that for youth coaches we think there should be similar requirements for college coaches of n c a a basketball teams we have additional details about these proposals in a recommendations fact sheet that is attached to our release arnie Uh, just quickly to close, and we're happy to take your questions. In addition to the discussion on basketball, you obviously heard in our third and last panel today about potential changes to the NCAA transfer rules. And the Knight Commission strongly supports eliminating the requirement that student athletes receive what's called transfer permission from their institution to receive athletics aid at a second institution. This is a significant change that rightly treats athletes like other students when they want to transfer. Universities and coaches simply don't own their players. Any student athlete in good standing should be free to transfer to another school without having to get the school's permission, just like every other student. To close, I just want to underscore that university presidents should, and I would plead with them, must seize this opportunity for reform, generated unfortunately by multiple recent high profile public scandals in men's basketball, as well as the Rice Commission reports. On paper, university presidents actually lead the NCAA, and today they have a rare chance to reform not just men's basketball, but the NCAA itself to try to restore public faith in the organization's ability to oversee the major revenue producing college sports. The Knight Commission's press release outlining our recommendations is posted at www.knightcommission.org, and all of you will receive a copy. Um, I'll stop there, and Carol and I are happy to take your questions. Uh, this question for Carol, um, only because you've been at the, you've been coming to these meetings for a lot longer. Um, what did you make of what Wendell Carter's mom said? I mean, I've listened to a lot of these meetings over time. That's some of the most unvarnished, uh, strongest stuff that I've ever heard any panelist say at one of these meetings. We've had some experiences in the past where. Uh, people have clearly brought very passionate viewpoints to our attention. Um, as a mother myself, I certainly um, appreciate that she had the opportunity to tell us her story and to share her passion uh, for uh, what her son is experiencing and what she as a parent is experiencing. Can you be more specific? I know shocking isn't quite necessarily shocking is the right word, but I, again, I, I'm, I haven't sat in on every meeting. I'm sure people in public and in private forums. The first time I ever heard somebody come in front of a commission and basically equate the college sports system to slavery or to prison labor. Well, certainly, again, she had a very strong point of view, and we appreciate that we provided a forum for her to express it. We have had similar uh, personal and passionate points of view that have been expressed before. I remember one time when we had a student athlete who came and talked very, very um, candidly and directly about his experiences and some of the things that he felt were very wrong. Uh, those are very informative to the commission's positions. Uh, Brian Murphy with McClatchy. I have a question for each of you. Ar Arnie, you mentioned that this is a day of reckoning. I imagine the similar things were said uh, with the CCNY scandal in the 50s and SMU football in the in the 80s. What what makes this different? Uh, the the sports seem to be as popular as ever, if if not even more popular. And then I, I had one other question. Um, it is uh, yeah deja vu all over again and. Uh, I think it's actually more difficult now because of the kinds of dollars that are attached to it. So I think the fundamental point that we're trying to make is just being very candid um, 
we don't believe in its current structure, its current governance structure, the NCA is capable of making the kinds of changes it needs. And we can talk about all kinds of nuanced policy details, but we're talking about a fundamental change that would bring in not some, but a majority of outside independent directors. And this is no different than good corporate governance and, you know, in, the, in the private sector. It's no different than good governance in uh, nonprofits or social service agencies. You need a level of independence. You need a, lack of, uh, a level of objectivity that I think by definition the NCA has lacked. And it does not guarantee success in any of these areas, but I think it would put the NCA in the ball game. Um, short of that, I don't think they, they're, they're in the ball game. I don't think they have a shot. And so this is a fundamental change in terms of governance. And I'll always go back, you know, evaluating you know, the nonprofits or sports teams or government, you have to look at governance. Um, I think the governance model has demonstrated that it, Again, it is incapable. It has frankly failed to deal with the kind of challenges that the NCA is facing today and historically as well. And again, there's just a level of self-interest or self-dealing that makes it, uh, I think, impossible to make the kinds of hard decisions and you know, uh, show the kind of courage that, uh, that it needs. And so there's no guarantee for success. I think this would be a significant step in the right direction. Um, and short of this, um, I don't think they have a chance, quite honestly. I think we want to emphasize that um, the university presidents really have a role here beyond governance too, because every single institutional president needs to step up and support some of these reforms. We have had pivotal moments before. Uh, this feels like an even more important one because as Arnie said, um, there's so much more money involved now and we're so committed that they use this opportunity, the NCAA and the university presidents use this opportunity uh, to get it right. And we believe if you get governance right, many of the other things will come along because you have those independent voices. Uh, you won't have everyone around the table having some kind of an interest in what's being discussed. So follow up, the, the Rice Commission, many of the changes they'd like to see require some sort of outside entity to also do something, and the NBA rule, for example. One of the areas where it wouldn't require any outside entity is um, the, the governance, uh, the, the enforcement. Um, and, and the Rice Commission, I'm just quoting, said the NCAA must have jurisdiction to address academic fraud and misconduct. Are, are you seeing any movement on the NCAA front on that specific um, taking that maybe away from the schools and giving the NCAA more power to determine what is academic fraud and what is not academic fraud? That is an issue that is very much under discussion, uh, yes. And it's not resolved yet. Um, there's very serious positions that the NCAA should not be the organization that determines academic quality. And at the root of some of the academic fraud issues is a question of quality and who determines quality. So it's very much under discussion. Thank you. Uh, William Ford, Washington Informer. It, question for either one of you. Going back to what this gentleman had asked about uh, Ms. Clea Carter. Simply, and I'll say it, just ask directly, do you see some in institutional racism on the NCAA? If so, does the commission have any recommendations on how to combat those concerns? Because you mentioned they keep coming up. We've heard the stories before, so how do you stop it? The NCAA, in my experience, has been uh, extremely interested in diversity and very careful to become extensively informed about the impact of issues on all student athletes, particularly those that come from underrepresented groups. There's a long history there of careful data analysis and careful interpretation. I would just add that I think we live in a society and a country in which racism is part and parcel of who we are and who we have always been. And for us not to acknowledge that is less than honest and to think that whether it's the NCA or the Knight Commission somehow immune from that racism um, would be a little uh, 
disingenuous. And so I think it's incumbent upon all of us to be reflecting every single day in our policies, in our practices, and what we're doing of are we really doing everything we can to combat that or not. And um, I think, again, whether it's the Knight Commission, whether it's the NCA, whether it's any other part of our society right now, um, we are grappling with these issues in some pretty profound ways, struggling with them. And I can't say we're winning. We're doing a, a thoughtful job in any, at any part of our society today as we should be. Greetings, Keith Adams from the CK Safe Project. And a question for both of you. You talk about, in terms of Knight Commission, member institution accountability uh, from the college presidents. My question is, um, with that piece, how does the Knight Commission feel about all student athletes receiving an additional stipend based on uh, member institutions? Because we often neglect our female student athletes as well as we focus on football and basketball. The, the Knight Commission has been very clear that we do not support pay for play and we do not support uh, unionization uh, for, for the athletes. But we have also been very clear that we believe that reform ideas that would enable us to direct more financial resources to student athletes should be carefully evaluated and if they pass the standards uh, be implemented. In our last meeting, for example, we made a very strong statement that we will continue to explore reform ideas, including how a limited antitrust exemption for the NCAA with restrictions might address current problems. I'm reading actually from our last press release, might address current problems and whether uh, financial benefits could be provided to players for use of their name, images, and likenesses. Uh, we've been studying these issues. Um, we've discussed them in prior commission meetings in May of 2015 and 2016, and we plan to continue vigorous exploration uh, because we do see options there for directing uh, more resources to students, particularly to benefit their health and safety and their education.